The Amazon, the greatest rainforest on earth, still holds places in which no person has ever set foot. Its mysteries may never fully be understood, but every now and again, science gives us rare glimpses into this alien world. We know now that it is the forest breath that gives life to the largest river on our planet, emptying billions of gallons of water into the vastness of the Atlantic Ocean. But where does it all begin? What lives in the places where the mountain streams of the Andes coalesce into the first major tributaries to the mighty river itself? This question brings us to southeastern Peru and a region called Madre de Dios, meaning the Mother of God. An area suspected to hold more forms of life than anywhere else on planet Earth. It's here that we begin our journey through the forests of the Tambopata, a reserve home to some of the world's strangest, rarest and most endangered creatures. It's dawn in the rainforest, and high in the treetops some of Tambopata's most curious residents begin to stir. A family of sluggish red howler monkeys await the intensity of the morning sun, ready for the first meal of the day. Young leaves are their favoured foods and can account for up to 80% of their diet. However, leaves contain precious little energy and so the family must spend a lot of time eating them. Whilst the adults rest and snack, the youngsters get to grips with living 40 metres from the forest floor. The howlers are unique among primates. Most monkey species are recognised for their human-like social skills and noisy chattering nature. But these monkeys are able to take vocalisations to the extreme. The structure that we can see on this female's neck is the adaptation that allows them to do so. As howlers are so abundant in this forest, they regularly dispute territorial boundaries with other groups. Today is like most others, and another group is verging on the family's territory. The intrusion hasn't gone unnoticed, and they rush for a better position in the treetops. And not a moment too late, the greedy intruders realise that the family is coming for them.
family is outmatched. The alpha male of the intruding group is huge, his voice booms deepest and loudest, and the family is forced to leave. Howler monkeys, like most other creatures that reside in the treetops, live in a multi-dimensional space less known to science than the surface of the moon. The howler monkeys have the loudest voices of all the land mammals, but there are other creatures here that are equally conspicuous. Birds can spend their entire lives up here, never touching the ground. They exhibit an astounding diversity of colour and form. Here in Tambopata there are more than 650 different species of birds occupying different niches within the canopy. Some are tiny and rarely spotted against the dense foliage. Others are giants and able to soar high above the treetops. All birds have complex social lives that we are just beginning to understand. These curl-crested aracaris, known for their brilliant plumage, gather in the same tree at the same time each day. They pluck insects from its branches, energising for social ritual and courtship. This male has spotted a female. How they can tell the sexes apart remains a mystery, as on the outside they are both identical. Both birds seem to be interested in one another, and they begin to preen their feathers ready for the occasion. But just as the male is about to make a move, a challenger gets there first. A quick snap to his beak lets him know that he's not welcome. He hangs his head in submission and makes a speedy exit, giving the couple some time alone. With the challenger gone, the male must complete one final test before the female will allow him to mate with her. He must duel her with his beak, as a show of his strength. She has to be sure that he's fit enough to help her raise a brood of chicks. It appears that the female is satisfied with his performance. Soon she will lay a clutch of eggs in the hollow of this emergent tree.
The Aracaris, like many other birds, spend their lives in small segments of the forest to which they are adapted. But not all creatures are so specialized in this way. There is a species that bridges the 40 meter gap between the canopy and the forest floor day and night in the rainforest's largest mass migration. They are the leaf cutter ants, a collection of species that harvest a fifth of all leaves that grow in the rainforest each year. A single colony, 8 million strong, branches out to cavernous underground nests. The leaves they cut from the trees are sometimes carried hundreds of meters to these nests and deep into subterranean gardens. It's in these gardens that specialized workers mulch the leaves into smaller and smaller pieces. The ants use the mulch as compost on which to cultivate only one species of fungus. This fungus is used to feed the entire colony. To sustain such a large colony, the ants must complete unimaginable physical feats. When translated to a human scale, an ant climbing an emergent tree would be equivalent to a human scaling the world's tallest building at 30 miles per hour, 11 times over. Down here on the forest floor, the canopy blocks out 95% of the sun's light. It's a dark and shady place to live. It's the realm of Tambopata's largest mammals and with them its largest predators. Giant rodents like the Zaguti hide skittishly among dense thickets of vegetation. and white-lipped peccaries travel in colossal herds numbering 200 or more. The peccaries have a fearsome reputation among hunters as they can often charge blindly when disturbed. Their smaller, less intimidating cousins, the collared peccaries, are also found down here, usually travelling in small family groups for protection. But this male is alone and vulnerable. He treads gingerly to avoid rustling the dry leaves that blanket the forest floor. Too much noise could attract unwanted attention. As he detects something close by, the hairs on his body bristle up, making him appear larger. If animals are to survive down here, they must be constantly vigilant, and with good reason. A predator that has reigned supreme over Amazonian forests since its ancestors first crossed the continental land bridge 12,000 years ago. They are creatures so elusive that very few people have ever seen one, 
but by using camera traps we are able to gain an insight into their mysterious lives. An adult male jaguar. He prowls the high forest just moments after this agouti finished burying nuts in the exact same location. A lucky escape for the agouti. A few hours later, a camera captures a puma, arriving only minutes before a group of collared peccaries passes the trail. A kilometer away, a 35 kilogram giant armadillo, one of Tambopata's least known and rarest mammals, scours the leaf litter for food. Whilst an ocelot glances past a camera, The cameras allow us to glimpse what may take years to see with our own eyes. When walking through the jungle, the forest floor can sometimes seem endless. But every now and again, the vastness of the terra firme meets an abrupt end. The canopy opens up to reveal an entirely new environment. An oxbow lake. These lakes are frequent along the edges of the Tambopata River. They are the remnants of its former course. But this particular lake is unique. It holds one of the largest colonies of a little known bird. The Agami Heron. Slender build, they are graceful stalkers of shallow swamps. They remain alone, hidden deep in the forest for most of the year, but gather in the lake just for a few months to breed. In the heat of the midday sun, the females build nests close to the water's edge. They compete for the best locations, those where a predator would find it difficult to reach their eggs. But one creature possesses the dexterity to climb the fragile limbs of the lakeside trees. On the opposite side of the lake, a troop of brown capuchin monkeys forages for fruit. The squirrel monkeys that trail behind the capuchins are also searching for a meal. But the capuchins are opportunistic and will seize the chance to steal some eggs, that is, if they can get them. But luckily the Agamis have chosen a nesting site outside of the capuchins' reach. And for now at least, they are safe. For the Agami herons, nesting season is also breeding season. Males pester the females for their attention, and sometimes they get lucky. A multitude of birds nest alongside the Agamis. These bizarre hoatsins were once thought to be the missing link between the first flying birds and today's feathery fauna. It's their diet that makes them so unique among birds. Whilst most feed on meat, berries or nuts, the hoatsins will only eat leaves and are specially adapted to do so. They have four stomachs much like a cow, and within these an ancient symbiosis with microorganisms breaks down plant matter for them. The lake edges teem with life. Bats fish for insects in the shallow waters, whilst near tropical cormorants oscillate their neck pouches 
in an attempt to keep cool. Among the myriad of creatures found in the Oxbow Lake is one of the world's most endangered species. The giant river otter. Over the last few decades, hunting for the otter's furs has decimated their population. It's suspected that there could be as few as a thousand left in the wild. The family is ruled by the adult female who swims at the front of the pack. She leads the movements of the rest and is barely distinguishable from her partner and litter of six cubs that swim behind her. We are only able to tell them apart from the unique markings that each otter possesses on its neck. As the afternoon sun begins to fade, the otters fish for piranha along the lakeside. They are excellent swimmers and easily catch the four kilos of fish they need to sustain themselves each day, leaving plenty of time for playing, grooming and relaxing. The otters are among the most social of mammals and reinforcing social bonds is essential for both their pack hunting strategy and their ability to pull together in the face of the many dangers that live in the lake. The sun is setting and with relationships secured the otters make their way down the lakeside towards their den. Generations of the otter family have fiercely defended the lake as their territory. At nearly two meters long, they are usually capable of doing so, even against a top predator like this four meter black caiman. But sadly, the otters have been overwhelmed by people. Although the trade in their skins has dramatically decreased, they now face a totally different kind of danger. As the family's cubs reach maturity, they must leave the lake and travel up to a hundred kilometers along the river in search of a place to start a family of their own. Upon reaching the river, the otters have a choice to swim upstream or downstream, and it's here on that lies the danger. Swimming downstream, they meet the city of Puerto Maldonado. The river here is polluted and dangerous boat traffic make it no place to start a family. Upstream, the otters face another dilemma, to take the left or the right fork at the confluence of the Tambopata and Malinowski rivers. Left, and they will enter Bacua Suneni National Park, a pristine wilderness. Right, and they meet colossal gold mines that scar the landscape and pollute the river with tons of toxic mercury. The otters have an uncertain future with the risk of extinction facing them on all sides. However, not all species have fared the rapid expansion of the human population so poorly. Far up the river, protected within the Tambopata National Reserve, is a very special place, host to the most colourful gathering of avian fauna in the entirety of the Amazon. 
Macaws, parrots and parakeets fly from tens of miles around to this one location on the promise of an essential food substance normally lacking in their diet. Salt. Contained in exposed clay at the banks of the river. The parrots and parakeets are the first to commence the feeding frenzy, accompanied by chestnut fronted and a pair of scarlet macaws. Next, it's the turn of the giants. The more tentative macaws generally prefer not to feed with the smaller birds. Once one makes a move, many will follow. But the clay lick also doubles as a social meeting point. Here, macaws form lifelong relationships that may outlast three generations of an otter family. Among the many creatures we've seen are some of the least understood and the most endangered animals on planet Earth. We the public are aware that far away in some distant part of the world there are still places that remain largely unchanged since the dawn of humanity. Let us hope that the Tambopata will stay that way.